Hola bandidos, ¿cómo estamos? Welcome to Mel's Magic. I'm Magic Mel and this is Al, one of my spirit guides. Welcome to episode 16 of season 5 and it's been a while. Not without reason, I've been busy taking an amazing coaching course. It's literally called the best fucking coaching course <laughs> by Simone Soul and Melissa Tears. And yeah, the opportunity arose and I just grabbed it. And I think that's very important for us nowadays. The universe keeps on opening doors to us, but it's up to us to open that door and walk through it. So surrender, trust, believe in yourself and believe that literally the universe is dishing up opportunities and they're within grasp and they are for us. Vale? I wanted to record this video also in honor of our recent, well yesterday's, full moon, first full moon of 2023 in the sign of Leo. And guess who is a Leo? <laughs> Mwah. So in honor of that, I yeah, felt like sharing some reflections and one of the invitations of this full moon is to contemplate the meaning of leadership. And as you know, I'm all about going within each one of us and finding that hero, that leader within us, because we all have a so-called wise advocate, higher self, inner guidance, inner core, spirit, soul that is guiding us. Now, whether we connect to it or not, that's the question. And I feel in this day and age, more and more of us are awakening to this inner leadership, to this inner authority, to this inner wise voice that actually is leading us on our soul's path, path on our soul's project and purpose. And to connect with that inner leader, we really have to make the space and the time and to distinguish also voices in our psyche that are not our inner authority, but maybe some accumulated voice from <sighs> an adopted outer authority from childhood, whether it's a teacher or a parent or our culture we grew up in, anything like that. It is not really our inner being speaking to us. And it's very important for us to discern who is speaking. I often call it, I pass the mic to all the voices in my psyche. I don't want to repress or shun or reject any of the voices, but I do use and cultivate my angelic discernment to know which voice is actually in favor of my expansion, in favor of my empowerment, in favor of the embodiment of the highest expression of myself. When fear talks, and fear is always present, and I also thank fear, because without fear, I wouldn't know where my growth is. But if fear talks, I recognize and I say, hey, okay, I'll listen to you. I'll listen to what you got to say. And usually that fear voice is some, sometimes a smaller version of me that wants to feel safe. And I extend compassion to that part of me. But I also tell that part, hey, you're not alone in this anymore. I'm here. I'm not going to abandon you. Me, higher self, all of us, we are creating this beautiful ecosystem where we respect each other's voices, but we don't stay stuck because of fear. We allow ourselves to feel safe and we allow ourselves the grace to go towards our expansion, which is not only for our highest good, but the highest good of everyone else and the universe at large, because guess what? <laughs> the universe is constantly expanding and our natural evolution is to expand, evolve. So I wanted to pull some cards today and I want to go right back to the root of things, the Rider Waite Carol Malin. And um, I guess my question would be, what energy connecting to my angels, spirit guides, and ancestors, what energy are we, i.e. you, everyone watching here, you and I, asked to embody? 
with this full moon energy what what energy are we asked to embody thank you so much Let's see what comes up oh by the way i'm doing one-on-one -on -one tarot card readings so if you want a reading by me by moi contact me i'm giving you my email in the description box below it's a fun way of yeah, kind of getting a map and an energetic map of where you're at, your obstacles, past, present, future, your opportunity. Yeah? Something fell to the ground. Ooh. The Wheel of Fortune. Now, the Wheel of Fortune is literally that. <laughs> it's the constant wheel of energies. You know, as you know, nothing stays static in the universe. And especially if we are still asked to resolve some karma, i.e. some actions we've planted in the past, the Wheel of Fortune encourages us to accept and to release that karma and to choose a higher path and to know that, hey, we're not stuck. If, we're, if we are in a challenging cycle, we're not stuck there because the Wheel of Fortune is always turning. And in this case, it's upright, meaning... We are calling in our fortune, literally. No? And you see also here the different elements, half, half animal, half angel, and the sphinx on top, and the snake on the side. Ooh, mirror reversed here. So sometimes we think, oh, it's fate. It's kind of things are happening, we're kind of doomed because of fate. I don't want to think like that. I very much think that whatever happens to us, if we look at it as a reflection of past thoughts and past manifestations we have put into motion, it is literally just, just that. The outer situation is a reflection of our manifestation, mind-body manifestation. So, lost my train of thought there. Oh yes, fate and destiny. We are the rulers of our destiny, i.e. we are the scribes of our destiny too. We are creators of our reality. That's why it's so important to create a stream or a train of thought that is in alignment with what feels good because our inner being is our compass, no? our, our feelings, our emotions our compass, negative and positive. If we're positive emotion means like, hey, go signal. Negative means uh, you need some realignment. So in that case, we all have a destiny, but it's up to us to align with it and to co-create with it. So even though something might be written in the stars, we got to actually live it out and set the necessary thoughts and beliefs and actions into motion that help co-create that destiny that is written in the stars and bring it down to earth. And the Wheel of Fortune energy is an auspicious energy that's literally saying, hey, the wheel has turned, you're no longer stuck. Use it, use, make advantage of this upright energy going in your favor and be in an abundance mindset also. It's up to us to see the opportunities, to walk through those doors, to perceive the abundance. It's like a put on your lenses of abundance, of magic, and appreciate. Appreciate meaning everything you have in the moment, value that and be grateful for that. And as we put our focus on what is already here, where our focus goes, energy goes, no? Where attention goes, energy flows. So whatever we focus on expands, meaning being aware of the abundance that's in the present moment will magnify that and bring more fortune into our reality. Vale? So that's one energy that we're asked to embody. Let's ask, what is our current obstacle? How about that? Thank you so much, dear angels, spirit guides, ancestors. What obstacle are we facing? What obstacle are we facing? I'll take this one. 
Page of Pentacles in reverse. So the Page of Pentacles is all about, Pentacles is a glitch. So I was saying that the Page of Pentacles in the upright is all about abundance, new financial opportunities, manifestations coming in, okay? It has to do with the 3D world. Now, in the reverse, it may just be warning us that we need to plan. So opportunities are coming in, but once these opportunities arrive, we also need to grasp them and then literally make a plan in the 3D world and not just keep the ideas in the ether. That's a good, <laughs> it's a good reminder for me who's very much, I have all these ideas, but then, you know, and then opportunities come in to really ground them with plans, with foresight, with action steps is a useful reminder. And let's take advantage of that and together with the Wheel of Fortune. Now, another question we can ask. What is coming in the near? What's coming in in the near future? Let's do that. Thank you so much. The angels, spirit guides, ancestors. What's coming ahead? Okay, we have the Nine of Wands. And the Nine of Wands, look at this dude. He looks a bit battered. <laughs> this energy very much talks about perseverance. So, the Wheel of Fortune is bringing in this abundance, our new fortune, our destiny calling. It's up to us to open those doors and to step into those opportunities and with the Page of Pentacles to really ground those opportunities with foresight and actual planning. The near future might bring challenges and that's okay. Let's not shrink away from challenges. Challenges are just opportunities for us to find new solutions, new strategies, new pathways. The key is not to give up. The key is really perseverance, consistency, and discipline. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. Discipline. And not in the harsh way where we like beat ourselves into work, but coming from a sense of, you know, when we have this procrastination going on or just this overwhelm, like, oh my God, don't know where to start. Break it down into actionable steps, I'm telling myself, and also look at it as, hey, I am so blessed and so lucky that I'm able to have a passion and a project and a purpose that I'm passionate about and I'm willing to pursue. And yes, it might take some effort and that's fine. I take it day by day. I persevere and I don't give up if challenges arise. I take a pause also. The guys also look reclining, leaning on his wand looking at the other ones it's okay to take a rest it's okay to take time out it's not even okay it's necessary especially in this day and age where everything is driven to like do 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 young 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 energy all the time where is our yin to balance that let's be inspired by nature who or what we're still in, in january hibernates doesn't mean nature's not doing anything she is recoiling her energy and regenerating to prepare for spring to come where everything is an outward energy again. It's about this flow of energy. So in our planning and in our ambition to go about and pursue our dreams, that's all fine. But during the entire process, we got to build in pauses, especially if you're an entrepreneur, if you're self-employed, where there's no one really telling you what to do. We got to make sure that we build in reasonable and necessary pauses for rest and then take up the wands again and continue building <laughs> how's that alors since it's the full moon in leo let's pull a monology card let's connect directly to hanya oh it's raining it's raining it's raining it's raining nice clear the energy so connecting with beautiful haniel 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 what is your message for us here watching in this full moon in the sign of Leo, first full moon of 2023? Thank you so much for your message. Haniel is the archangel of the moon. There's so many angels, guys. 
<laughs> I bought like angel lexicons, but I'm like, whoa, there's a lot of you guys up there. <laughs> you don't need to get bogged down with specific names. You can just, the main thing is to open yourself up to that kind of connection. They will hear you, but you have to make the initial step and literally want to be interested in connecting. Okay, we've got three cards. Well, together with our Wheel of Fortune and the Page of Pentacles, bringing in opportunities, seizing those opportunities, grounding those opportunities, and then staying with it, the Nine of Wands, remember? Adjustments are required, and that's okay. It's pretty normal. You know, I make all kinds of plans, and then I realize, wait a minute, uh, I need to balance this out. Maybe I need to be a little bit... Just an example, maybe I need to listen more rather than steaming ahead with my message. Maybe my task is to, or my adjustment is to really, in order to connect to someone, instead of talking too much, really listen, really practice this deep listening. Adjustments are always required. The key is really to be still enough and perceptive and empathetic and sensitive enough to our environment to actually recognize, well, what are those adjustments? Check in with yourself. Pause. Nine of Wands. Pause. Realign. Regroup. What adjustments are required at this point in time? Mm, I love this. Show the world the real you. And that is so, so, so this Leo energy. The charisma, the authenticity that Leos bring out. And we're, we're kind of notorious you know, for being this like loud, uh, all stage attention energies. It might be true, but there's always a high expression and a shadow expression of each archetype. So I'd like to think of this Leo energy as, again, bringing out the leader that shines and maybe is a light to other people, but not at the expense of other people's voices, but in tune with other people and being a charismatic leader that actually other people choose. Show the real, show the world the real you means being authentic. And I know that word, that word is being thrown around all the time, but being authentic means being transparent or congruent with what is going on inside you, the way you're feeling, the way you're communicating, the way you're thinking and believing. So you're not out of alignment. You're not saying one thing and meaning something completely different. People pick up on that vibe. Being you means feeling comfortable in the quirkiness of you, the weirdness of you, all parts of you, not just the parts that you think are socially accepted, but the wholeness of you and showing that in an authentic way, which kind of means confidence. Not like, hey, this is me in all my glorious complexity, in all my glorious messiness and paradoxical ambivalence sometimes. It's me. And then let other people respond to that without you putting your oh, sense of validation or worth on that. Show the world the real you, because we need your gifts and we need your uniqueness, your unique lens through which you see the world. And last message. Ah, always good. Bring love into the situation. One thing I've really expanded on, oops, <laughs> really expanded on, the past two years especially is an understanding of love, which I felt in the past was, in my case, very narrow, kind of a romanticized, distorted, idealized version of love, very egocentric love. But love nowadays, how I understand it, is so much more. It's compassion, it's respect, it's understanding if it's possible, but we can also respect another person without necessarily understanding them. It's patience. Lots, tons and tons of patience, obviously starting with ourselves first and then with other people. It's commitment. It's a decision. It's courage. <laughs> All of those things are love. And if we view and if we bring love into a situation, we always get the bigger picture. If there's a lack of love, it usually comes from a distorted, hurt 
viewpoint of ours that cannot empathize with the other person or cannot zoom out into expanded view, into a more tolerant view. So bringing love into a situation means that bringing spaciousness into a situation. And again, it might not lead to a resolution, but at least it will lead to respect and to seeing what is there without distorting it with our fear. That's how I understand this card. Beautiful message? Okay. And let's do a, let's do a, a card from the Oracle. Yeah? Let's connect to Hanyal again. Can you hear the rain? It's very soothing. Beautiful Hanyal, Hanyal, Hanyal. Beautiful Oracle. Give us one more message with this full moon in Leo. What does the oracle have to say? It's fast. Ah, oh, I love this one. Come to the edge. So can you see this girl being completely in her element, being so absorbed in her dance of aliveness that she doesn't even notice that she's kind of teetering on the edge. And I interpret that as the dance of, yeah, aliveness that happens when we're at the edge of our comfort zone. A comfort zone is this whole conglomerate of familiar habitual patterns that our brain can recognize and that our brain feels comfortable and safe because it can predict those patterns. No? Coming to the edge means, well, we're going beyond that. We're stepping out of that comfort zone where there's a certain amount of uncertainty. But with that uncertainty comes possibility, opportunity, adventure, exploration, development, expansion. So we're all being invited to take on board this energy of the Wheel of Fortune, to use the energy of the Page of Pentacles to ground our plans into the material world and to persevere, remember, with the Nine of Wands and to not forget, or let's put it that way, to remember to enjoy dancing just outside of our comfort zone where we are growing growth happens at the edge of our comfort zone and a sense of aliveness happens at that edge because it's the exhilaration of coming to life of being open of exploring of trying out something new of trying out a new identity of leaving an old identity, of just having fun also. <laughs> Let's remember to have fun and enjoy this process and really do this dance. I mean, what is, it? is a Buddhist saying now? At the end of the day, it's all Maya and Leila, Leila's dance. It's a cosmic dance of creation. Are we dancing with our creations or are we constricted in our fear, in our habitual thinking, in our old limiting beliefs? Let go, open up, let go and come to the edge where the beautiful dance of Leila of creation happens. Hmm? Beautiful energy. <laughs> okay, let's leave it at that. I've missed you guys. Yes, I have. And remember, I'm doing a coaching course. I'm Magic Mel, your joy coach. You can email me for one-on-one -on -one coaching. My email is in the description box below. And you can contact me for one-on-one -on -one tarot energy readings. Okay? Magic men. La belle. <laughs> and my channel is called Mel's Magic. If you're new here, welcome for my long-term viewers. I love you. I'm sending lots of love. And let's seize and summon this beautiful full moon in Leo energy. Al and I have got your back always. Sending lots of love. Ciao. <laughs>